Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's talk about the abundance of the elements in the universe and let's concentrate on the ones in our galaxy first because the rest of the universe is so far away it's kind of hard to see if this consistency works for all of the whole universe but at least in our galaxy alone and of course our solar system is part of our galaxy we have a pretty good idea what the relative abundance is of the elements in the galaxy. And so if we take a look at the first two, the first, the two most abundant elements, it's hydrogen and helium. Notice if this is in percent, hydrogen and helium take up at least 99% of all the mass in the galaxy and presumably also in the universe. But what's really surprising is that the third most abundant element is oxygen, then carbon, then neon, then nitrogen, then iron, then magnesium, silicon, and rounding off the top 10 is sulfur. Notice what I've tried to do here is kind of normalize things a little bit. If oxygen represents an abundance of one, then helium, there's about 120 helium molecules for every one oxygen molecule and roughly 1200 hydrogen molecules for every, uh, or I should atoms, because in the case of hydrogen, we talk about atoms here, so there would be about 1200 hydrogen atoms in relation to every one oxygen atom. Now the numbers aren't quite perfect and that's because for various reasons. Uh, roughly speaking there's about 10 times as many hydrogen atoms as are helium atoms but of course if you look at it a little bit more carefully it's a little bit greater than a 10 to 1 ratio. What's interesting is we used to think that water was a very rare substance that somehow the earth ended up with water which was very uncommon in the universe but when you think about it what makes up uh, water which oxygen and hydrogen and of course hydrogen being the most abundant element in the universe and oxygen being the third most abundant element in the universe it would therefore stand the reason that water should not be a rare substance that there's plenty of oxygen and hydrogen to go around. Now what we will find is that some solar systems are probably fairly scarce of the heavy elements anything beyond hydrogen and helium while the solar system that we live in is rather abundant in these heavy elements so especially in our solar system where you would have a much higher ratio of these elements in our solar system you can expect a lot of water to exist even if it's not in liquid form but in either vaporous form or in in frozen form which is probably the most common way to find water in the universe you can see that that does make sense also we realize that almost half the earth is made out of iron the core of the earth, the liquid portion, the salt portion of the earth is made out of iron but then when you look iron is the seventh most abundant element in the universe so again that should not be a big surprise. Then also the other half of the earth is primarily made out of rock. Now what is rock made out of? Well the, the two most abundant elements in rock would be oxygen and silicon. Oxygen being the third most abundant element and silicon the ninth most abundant element you can again see that it stands to reason that rocky planets in solar systems where there's a lot of heavy elements would be a fairly common substance because silicon and oxygen are therefore some of the most common elements in the uh, galaxy and therefore probably in our solar system. Also notice that we have neon and nitrogen being very abundant and of course the primary substance in our atmosphere is nitrogen so that's kind of interesting. Neon is a noble gas doesn't react with anything so it would be hard to find neon anywhere uh, but again, notice neon is the fifth most abundant element in the galaxy. Rounding off then the next six, and that's kind of a group together because there's kind of a gap after the sixth one. You can see that it's mostly metals, aluminum, calcium, sodium, nickel, chromium, and phosphorus. But notice in relative abundance when you look at sulfur, Notice that aluminum is about only one-fifth as much as sulfur, so is calcium, sodium, nickel is about a tenth, and then chromium is about a twentieth, and phosphor is about a thirtieth, the abundance of sulfur, which is the tenth item on the list here. So this is good to know, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next couple of videos about the abundance of the elements, because it helps us understand a little bit more about the origin of our solar system, the origin of the things in our galaxy and it's of course depending upon the relative abundance of these elements and so it's kind of nice to know that and then also you can then assume that if you find a solar system where these heavy elements are rather rare and so you primarily have hydrogen and helium that the chance of finding terrestrial planets are fairly low and the chance of finding large gas planets of course then would be very high so 
Again, the reason why we think that we have a lot of terrestrial planets and rocky cores in our gas planets is because we are living in a solar system where the sun had a very high abundance of these elements and the, therefore the, the region of space, the nebula where we think our solar system came from, must be rich in these elements for the solar system to look the way it does. So it all kind of adds up together and so we're going to continue exploring from a point of understanding where a solar system came from and why it looks the way it looks today. And that's how we do that.